this one. That's what I can say. Now we can't cover all of them in one trip or in a budget trip. But we could have gone, we just went like close by. Maybe the small ones here and there for the walking and stuff. The international airport is called Valena International Airport and it is surrounded by two islands. The Malay Island and the Hulu Malay Island. Now the Hulu Malay Island is quite a new one which is still under construction and in the development phase. It has phase 1 and phase 2. My hotel was in Hulu Malay Island itself. There is a beach beside the hotel and you will find a lot of hotels over there in the range of 2000 to 5000. So it's a good place to stay if you just want to hang around for two nights like what I did. Second building from here. The room rent is around 2200 per night and it varies as per the season. So the time when I went it was around 2200 and for two nights I paid 4200. And if couples book it then it costs around 3300 per night. There are several modes of transport which includes a bus, a ferry, a speedboat, any kind of taxis which you get in the city and, and even private aeroplanes or seaplanes. Now it depends on what kind of budget you are in. I got a free pickup and drop from the airport to the hotel, so I saved money over there. The only amount of money which I spent on travel was 350 rupees for a one way in a cab because I shared the cab with two other friends, they had shared the other side of the journey. In the airport area, the, the place is pretty small, it's in the middle. In the airport area, there are ferry terminals which is basically for the private resorts which are in different islands, but there is a speedboat terminal over there. And there are paid walk tours for Malay, which cost around 2000 for around 2 hours of walk, which is not that useful because you can actually go and visit it by yourself. You just have to do one thing, that is download Google Maps offline and you can use it without any data. And you will not be scared about getting lost in the city. In Hulu Malay, you can visit the Central Park, which is a huge park. And if you like to make a lot of videos and take a lot of photos, this is the best place to go. But make sure you visit that place in the morning or in the evening time when the sun is low. In Central Park, I found this interesting place with a lot of cars. And being a car fan, I was like, oh my god, I need to check this out. I guess the cars were just parked over there, but you can find some good awesome cars over there. And I roamed around this Hulu Miley Island on my foot. It was around 3 kilometers walk. Particularly this bridge itself is so nice. You can see three bridges across the same line and the sea beneath it. This bridge connects the Hulu Malay phase 1 and phase 2. After crossing the bridge and coming back to the Hulu Malay island, you have State Bank of India over there, you have the grocery stores over there, you have the hotels over there which I have shown you, the restaurants over there. It's a good place to stay and a cheaper place to stay. In Malay, there is a museum which I couldn't go to because I was late by the time I reached over there. And then there is Tsunami Monument and I have watched the sunset also. There is a ferry terminal again over there. And then there is a food court over there, which was wonderful because if you are a non-vegetarian, you'll get a lot of options in 75 MBR. In the fast food option, there was Burger King KFC, which was close to the airport. And uh, the cost was okay, around $10 for burger, fries and coke. If you buy coconut water from the roadside, it will cost you around 150 rupees. Now in the city where I was staying, there were other restaurants like Bombay Darbar, Nagas. The Bombay Darbar menu was good compared to other restaurants I felt. It was a biryani would cost you around 675 rupees and a naan would cost you around 60 rupees. Packed chapati and some egg rolls and all. It was 10 MDR which is nothing but 50 rupees. Which is again very decent. Normally one egg would cost around 10 rupees. My dinner was homemade paratha and this cup noodles. The second day breakfast was free. The lunch was free as a part of the tour package. The dinner was a buffet dinner which costed me 360 rupees and I had good amount of food in that. Day 3, I had breakfast again free of cost. Lunch was, I had some khakara which was again 100. And in the evening before catching a flight, I had cold coffee again that was around 275 rupees. In total, came around 1000 rupees. In a budget trip, always remember to carry some dry food with you like cup noodles, khakara, papad, and some chips like makhana that would help you in saving cost in Maldives you can book separate tour packages as per your need these are the day tours there's a half day tour there's a full day tour the one which I had booked was a full day tour uh, with lunch was 4,400 rupees the others are parasailing which is 10,000 seaplane uh, ride which is 10,000 INR again submarine is for 1 hour 7,500 INR there is a water sport package which includes a jet ski, tube ride and a banana ride for 1 hour, 5000 rupees INR. And the one which I took included 4 things. 
that is a boat ride, dolphins, a small picnic in the sand beach, snorkeling and food also. It was 4400 and this is good because it includes everything you would like to do in a small budget trip. I had to pay additional $10 which is 700 rupees for the GoPro recording which again I shared it with the other person so it costed around 350 rupees for me. All these packages are per person that's why the crates are cheaper. Then there are few other packages like walking tour package or island hopping package. Suppose you don't want to stay in a big resort outside, you can stay in the small hotel here and you can just visit those islands. Now you can do two way, either you can take a speed boat on your own and make a package on your own or you can buy these packages. If I'm going next time again to Maldives, I'll take an independent tour to the resorts instead of taking a package for the resort. I don't feel it's a uh, value for money if I take a package for the resort. SIM card options. I had taken a Geo SIM card on roaming with the pack 1101 rupees. It was a very costly pack and I had made a bad decision because the incoming calls costed me 75 rupees per minute and the outgoing calls 150 rupees per minute. Airtel also has a pack of 4000 rupees but that's again too costly. What I found was that SIM cards which you get over there is much cheaper. That's Hirago or Oridio and you get both of them from the airport. You can see the packs $35, $50, both of them have similar packs and depending upon where are you staying and how is the coverage, you can select any one of them. Depending upon the date of travel and the location from where you are boarding the flight, the flight cost would range around 15,000 rupees to 18,000 rupees per person for a round trip. So it's pretty cheap and I boarded the flight from Bangalore and I had booked the flight tickets 5 days prior to travel. So it was quite costly for me, it was 18,000 rupees up and down. But normally from Bangalore it is very cheap, 14,000 rupees up and down and that's all. The visa process is quite simple but it is a visa on arrival so you should have these three things, a return ticket, a hotel booking and funds for your trip. Now these three things were checked by the people sitting at the Indigo counter also, that is the airlines counter. Then in the immigration uh, counter where I was checking out of India and in the immigration in Maldives and take a printout of it because you have to keep it handy. Regarding the funds, there is no proper direction as to how much fund you should show but I showed them for around a two days trip 30,000 rupees INR which was in my debit card so I just took a bank statement and I showed it to them. Due to the COVID restriction, there was another compulsory thing which you had to do. Make sure that your vaccine certificate has passport number and health declaration. Now health declaration was required in India also and in Maldives also. Maldives has something called Imuga and India has a simple airline health declaration form which is filled online. Both of them are online, pretty simple process. The airport Wi-Fi logs in with a Gmail account or a Facebook account but if you have a double security installed in your phone with Facebook or Gmail wherein they send an OTP to your Indian number then you cannot log in itself in that account for the Wi-Fi and that's what I faced because my account had double security and I didn't have the number which was linked to the Gmail and Facebook. So to streamline your internet connectivity in airports what I feel is you can have an alternate account with lesser security features and use that for all this public Wi-Fi places. I have also made the full vlog in detail which I'll be uploading soon in my channel and if you like this video you might like that one too. Please drop a thumbs up and share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel to get more updates on the other video. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. The most important part of this trip was the whole trip got completed in around 30,000 INR. That too including the food, travel and everything and you can also plan the trip like this and enjoy a solo trip. I made friends here. There were some people from Bangladesh in my room, beside my room. So I made friends with them. Very nice, very humble people. And the people over here, so they are super friendly. And the locals are super friendly. Overall, it's a fantastic trip. If you're coming solo or if you're coming for a honeymoon with your better half, it's one of the best places to come.